you know what's bogus is when chip 8 format files aren't actually chip 8 files because these instructions here that I could not find in Wikipedia or in this uh, chip 8 documentation are part of the super chip. So look at that, enable extended screen mode, that's 00FF. So I think we know what's going on here now. This is not a chip 8 program. So I have to find some chip 8 programs and uh, we'll see if that's possible. So chip 8 program. A collection of chip 8 programs. Oh, cool. Nice. Random number, Morse code, playtime with Chipquarium. What does Cavern do? Escape the cave. This sounds awesome. Chipquarium, fish tank simulator. Is there a simple one? A waveform of a heart monitor. That sounds pretty cool. Add source for the heart monitor program. What does it look like? Well, this is cool. It looks like they uh, had some sort of compiler that could actually convert this to .ch8. Now let's see if this is actually a real program. So if I download this, and uh, place it in that folder, give me one second here, go into my downloads, searching by date modified, all that good stuff. Uh, go into my tutorials folder, ship eight binary folder, and we'll put that heart monitor in there. Let's see if that heart monitor has a bunch of unknown instructions. I'm going to read the online stream. What? How can it have a length that is not modulo 2? Everything is 2 bytes. Okay, let's, let's open this up in this program here. Take a look at it. Okay, sure, sure, yeah. It ends with some eight zeros. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think if we subtract one from that, we can we can have it work. So now the only opcodes we're missing are 0000 and 0080. What could those be? And there's a lot of them. The whole end of this program. So this, this could this be some sort of data that it wants to load in or something? I'm not sure. But uh Let's run with it. This is looking a lot better than the previous programs. So to do this, we gotta do a bunch of work still. Uh, we can't just execute one opcode because we've got things like jumping around, go to subroutines and so on and so forth. So we need to read all the opcodes into memory and uh, it's gonna be basically our program, which will be a list of instructions and then the program counter is used to index the correct instruction and then if our program counter is manipulated, uh, then we will jump to that appropriate section of the code and we should be all good to go. So let's give that a shot. What I'm gonna do is read the file in to an array of unsigned shorts and pass that to the CPU. The CPU will have that list or that array of unsigned shorts and then can figure out which one to index and execute. Let's give it a shot. So we're going to have here a list of new shorts, which will be my program. And then every time we read an opcode in, I'm just going to program dot add that guy in there. Now, once that's done, we're going to take this out and we'll do something like CPU dot load program or something. Program dot to array. And now we have to write this. So I'm going to have a public U short program. 
have the ability to load a program in. So we've loaded the program in. Let's set the program counter to zero just because. And then I'm going to have a step instead. And step is going to get the opcode from the program using the program counter. And then it's going to execute that opcode waiting for key press. So waiting from key press will return immediately because we don't want to incre uh, increment the program counter. And then otherwise here, we'll increment the program counter every time by two. And I think, I think what I'll actually do is I'll increment it first. This is where we get into sort of weirdness wait for waiting for key press and instead of returning I will actually break and I'll just subtract two from the program counter to cancel cancel out the two that I just added above and that way if we step again we're still waiting for a key press so no big deal. Okay. So step, load program, and then step. That's what we'll do. I don't know what signals are terminate. So does this code just run forever? We don't have an off code to stop. I wonder if 0000 was meant as the stop. I don't know. So what we'll do is we'll just while true, so forever, uh, we'll call CPU step. And we need to put a try around that and a catch, exception E. And then we'll write to the console that message again. And let's see where our first exception happens. Let's see, everything's looking good, 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 good. So our first exception. Index was outside the bounds of the array, so the program counter probably got incremented past the array. Let's not catch the exceptions and actually try to debug our code a bit. Okay, opcode equals program PC, which got set to 526. <laughs> That's not good. How did program counter get set to 526? It must have been set somewhere else here. I probably need to look more at what the memory actually looks like on this chip. Let's see. Programming data space. Tribute language is capable of accessing up to 4 kilobytes of RAM from location 000 to FFF. The first 512 bytes are where the original interpreter was located and should not be used by the programs. Most chip 8 programs start at location OX200, but some begin at OX600. Programs begin at OX600 are intended for the ETI 660 computer. Okay, so really, I should be starting the program at 512, and really this is all... This really should all be loaded into quote-unquote RAM. Interesting. Should have read about this first. So, I'm not going to have a program. Instead, what I'm going to do... Sorry, I'm thinking about this for a second. When I load the program in, I'm actually going to load it into my RAM, starting at an offset of 512. So really I should clear the RAM, just to make sure there wasn't something else sitting around in there. And then, close your eyes, listen, program.link. This is annoying because I'm going to be converting U-shorts back to bytes, and then when I go to use them in the step instruction, I'll be converting those bytes back to U-short. But, this is fine. Everything is fine. 512 plus I times 2 because each of these program values is two bytes. That's gonna be equal to program i ended with OX 
FF00. I'm going to store them the way I would like to read them back. Uh, this is going to be a bite. Ram 513 plus I times 2 is equal to bite program I and with OX00 FF. Okay, so I will load them into the RAM and then the opcode is going to be equal to RAM of the program counter. And the program counter is actually going to be 512 when I start a program. Program counter, let me do this right. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be program counter PC shifted by 8. Forward with the RAM of PC plus one, and then I have to convert that whole thing into U short. Okay, let's see what this looks like. My first op code should be 00. My first op code is 224, which is 00U0. That's nice. Next op code, 0000. zero, zero, zero. What was my program counter? 202. Two. Let's take a look at my memory here. Yeah. I'm going to take a look at my locals. Go into my RAM and take a look at offset 512. 20E0, zero, 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 zero. That doesn't look right. I should have had 6100. Zero, zero. Let's look to see what is actually coming into my load program call here. 6100. It's looping over the program length, and when we get all the way through, RAM 512. Zero, zero, zero. It's totally bogus. So something's not working quite right. Alright, program 00E0. Zero, zero, zero. Let's check this here. Can I actually put it at the end of the loop? There we go. So that's I0. And then I is equal to 1. We'll be writing to address. 202 and 203. To me, that looks right. And if I go and take a look at this dot ram 514, this dot ram 515. Let's turn off the hexadecimal display so I can kind of see 514 and 515. Program 1. And with OXFF0. Right, I have to shift it down by 8 bits. My bad. We got it. First op code is 224, which is 00E0. Next op code is 6100. Looks correct. Okay. 6200. 6009, 6431, so on and so forth. Let's see where the next exception happens. It's hanging out doing something. Cool. It's it seems to be running a program. Neat. So we can't actually see anything yet. So I think the next step is going to be uh, getting the display to actually output to some sort of file that we can see. So maybe just a PNG image or something like that for now. Um, could I even, I wonder if I could just set characters in the console, that might be kind of neat. I'll, uh, I'll think about it for a moment and we'll be right back.